Hi everyone, good afternoon. I'm Ilaria Gomarasca and I would like to welcome you today to this web webinar on uh, um, digital distribution hosted by FirstCut Plus in collaboration with uh, Wendy Smith West. Before starting the webinar, I would like to say a couple of words about uh, the program FirstCut Plus, uh, which is supported by media and uh, works in collaboration with two platforms. Uh, one is Wendy Smith West and the other one is Carlo Vivari Eastern Promises. First Cat Plus, it's a new program uh, created for boosting uh, the access of uh, international uh, to the international market uh, for films from Central and Eastern Europe, and uh, consists uh, in the promotion of a for portfolio of 16 films uh, in uh, post-production. Um, and today, actually, we are going to announce uh, the winter's lineup. Uh, which you can also uh, already find on our website and on our Facebook page. Uh, the eight selected films uh, will be promoted uh, during uh, the winter section in Trieste during the When East Meet West in uh, January 2021. And um, those participating projects will uh, benefit from uh, three days of uh, consultations on promotion, marketing, festival and sales strategy, audience designs, uh, etc., from various uh, film experts, and also uh, will benefit of a work in progress session open to selected uh, decision makers. Uh, First Cat Plus is uh, searching for new, bold, and uh, alternative ways of uh, promoting uh, uh, independent films. So that's the reason why we are hosting uh, today this online panel. So let me please introduce you to our panelists uh, today, which I'm really, really uh, happy to welcome. Tudor Giorgio, president of Transylvania Film Festival in Romania. Michal Mislinski, distributor of uh, Aurora Films in Poland. Anne-Sophie Leerck, Commercial Director at Cinemarket France, and uh, Johanna Stais, Head of International Sales at uh, Eretics Outreach in Greece. And I'm also pleased uh, we can count on Martin Blaney from Screen International as our moderator today. So Martin, over to you. Thank you very much, Ilari. Yes. Um... This afternoon, we're going to be talking about the role of online platforms for films specifically from Central and Eastern Europe, looking at positive uh, practices and success stories of bringing cinema, cinemas, uh, festivals and online platforms together. And um, we have people from different areas who have experience in working with online platforms. And um, we will also have an opportunity towards the end of the hour where um, you can um, ask questions. There is a Q&A function, I think, on the, the page here. So if you have any particular specific questions arising from the discussion, please feel uh, free to send them. And then we will uh, go through the, the questions towards the end of the, the hour this afternoon. Um, I'm going to ask each of the, the panelists to give a, um, a run through of their particular uh, companies' activities and also how they work with uh, um, the various VOD platforms. And uh, I thought I would start with going all the way down to Greece, to Athens, to Johanna um, from Heretic Outreach, um, the, describing itself as a boutique world sales company founded in 2014. And um, uh, I know you. Um, we're initially focusing on films produced or co-produced by Southeastern European countries. As time has gone on, you have brought, branched out to um, take films from other countries as well. But um, naturally this afternoon, we're looking especially at Southeast and Central European films and your experiences working with those. So perhaps you could uh, say how you um, uh, acquire the films and how you um, have had success in uh, getting these films then picked up um, to be screened on online platforms. 
Hi, yes. So, um, well, you described it uh, very well, so I won't, <laughs> I won't make the intro again. Um, indeed, when, when we started uh, off initially with uh, heretic outreach, our focus was uh, only on, on Southeastern European films. Uh, then we, we branched out. Our focus still naturally uh stays there but not not more than 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 on other territories anymore but of course uh it, it's it's a region we look uh closely at and we have uh i mean you asked how we we do the acquisitions so i guess as we do it in other territories we uh follow all the different um specialized and, and national uh festivals important festivals important um industry markets at these festivals we have the of course our privileged uh relationships with producers locally uh that, that we now know for for many years and and i guess it it happens um as it as it does in 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 uh, in other territories, um, I think a difference for us compared to when we started off is that on some projects we uh, might enter uh, earlier on. Um, so, for instance, now we've we've entered on on a project from the region uh, on script stage. Uh, it, it's not announced yet, but but uh, depending on the pre project, we can enter earlier on as where when we started off, it was really trying to work on finished films at the time. Um, I have to say, I mean, I know to, today's subject is, um, is the, I mean, is on the films of the region, but I think that as from uh, anywhere else, uh, what counts is how good the film is at the end of the day and how powerful it is, how strong the talent, the thing that, you know, I, I think that if, um, if a film from the region is strong enough, it can have the same chances to find uh, all rights distribution across multiple territories on, on VOD platforms. Of course, um, I think it, it, you know, everything depends also on, on the territory it comes from. So for instance, uh, talking generally about the films of the region and, and probably future tendency, and I guess maybe Tudor or Michal will have more things to say about that. But I think that uh, when we talk about platforms such as Netflix or Amazon and their you know, general strategy, uh, we know for a fact that they want to uh, sort of implement, uh, you know, and have a bigger establishment in, in that region and in these markets. And then specifically, I'd say in the bigger territories of Central or Eastern Europe. So of course, the tension will not be the same when we're talking about Czech, Czech Republic, Poland, Romania, uh, compared to other maybe smaller territories of the region. But because they want to uh, have a bigger impact in the region, I think that we'll see more productions coming from there. Uh, earlier stage, let's say, uh, collaborations with such bigger platforms rather than just, um, how do we say, rather than just uh, finished films acquisitions that were just, you know, sold um, at a later stage, either through a distributor or directly from, you know, a, a sales agent. Um, so that's, um, that's a tendency, I would say. Um, and then I think, you know, people want to see distributors, platforms, etc. They want to see fresh uh, content from the region. So um, for instance, an example I had uh, of a film, which is, I mean, mostly, I mean, its main nationality is uh, from the Netherlands, but um, co-produced and all uh, set and spoken uh, from Bosnia. So in a way, it's, it's very Eastern European film, which premiered in Rotterdam and in La Cide uh, in Cannes is a film called Take Me Somewhere Nice. Uh, which, for instance, was was a very refreshing film on you know how you can combine um, in a way Balkan themes, uh, stories, and images with the very uh, pop uh, and fresh visual, which is not you know common in the region, and and it was a festival's hit. Uh, and it was very successful on uh, um, Mubi. Uh, so uh, you can, I think that at this stage, you can either find collaborations with big platforms, but I think it will be more on how I, you know, I described it before, either a standout project, which is not, you know, because of its nationality, 
or a co-production uh, or, or let's say pick up because of where it comes from, because they want to establish themselves in the region, talking about the bigger platforms. And then of course there are uh, smaller platforms that are focused on region on, on regional content um, and, and aim at an audience which is either regional based or uh, expats abroad um, uh, across the world but the revenues there of course are, are much lower so yeah I don't know if I've covered uh, <laughs> yes sure yes what, what sort of um, what, what, what would those platforms be are they like for Polish uh, expat community in the UK, or, or who who would they be? Do you have some names of some of those sort of platforms? Well, I think there are many. Uh, maybe Anne Sophie can also mention some. Uh, but for instance, um, and and by the way, we work with with many of them because we want our plat. I mean, our, our films to be seen. So very often, it's not about revenue, but mostly for the films to be out there um, and. And for instance, I was contacted by a platform called Cineseum, which seems to be very, very uh, active and I hadn't heard of it before. So uh, that's a new one from me. And they seem to be very, very active and implemented in 150 countries. So that's, that's new for me. Maybe Anne Sophie knows them for a while. Uh, or there are mo more local platforms uh, like Cine Square, or, uh, or maybe sometimes they're, they're more on a genre based rather than and I mean, we might find a lot of, of content from that region, but they might be more uh, documentary based or more, um, uh, you know, so it really, uh, maybe, maybe Anso Pifi wants to, to complete so that I, I, I stop talking for a bit <laughs> to not monopolize the yeah, sure, conversation. I'm happy, I'm happy to join here. Thank you, Foscat Plus and Ilaria for having me again in one of your panels today. I work for cinemarket.io, which is an online marketplace where people who have uh, rights of films, uh, producers, but also sales agents, can meet people uh, buying films. So distributors, festivals, and of course, uh, online platforms, especially this year. Uh, and definitely on Cinemarket, that's what we see as well. We are a reflection of the real market, but online. And what we see is that besides the big uh, platform is that we have a lot so many that it's really hard to keep track on, on, on each platform because there are so many uh, coming every day and trying to expand their library to give uh, as many choices as possible to their audiences. So some of them will be very general. Uh, we have some like movie that are after quality titles that run into festivals, but you have some that are very niche focused platforms that uh, focus on a very specific uh, type of films. I'm thinking about this, a Taiwanese platform called Gaga Ulala, uh, which is buying anything as long as it's LGBTQ content. So it doesn't matter if your film is from Eastern Europe, South America, whatever. They just care about uh, the, the genre of the film, the content, and actually the niche uh, target of people that will watch uh, this platform. Uh, we have also another platform from the UK called Filmdo, which at the beginning was very much about Asian titles and now is focusing more on education. So anything that can be interesting for education languages but also historical facts or cultural facts about one specific country is of interest for them because they build uh, small educational papers around the films uh, like uh, documentaries short films feature films doesn't matter as long as it's really targeting a, a very specific element that they can use for education so definitely any film doesn't matter where they are coming from can find an online way to be uh, shown and to find an audience there the question will be more on the revenue because as uh, Johanna said then besides the very big platform that are offering uh, a, a fee uh, 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 up front, but then you won't get any feedback afterwards, no data or anything about your movie and you won't see the rights ever again. You have the small platforms that allow you to be streamed and shown in as many platforms as you wish, because most of the time they take uh, non-exclusive rights, meaning that you can sign with as many platforms as you want. But of course, the revenues are not upfront. They are shared uh, revenue, that's what they give you and you have to wait uh, the reports that they send you every three months, uh, every year, depending on the platform and there you have to 
wait and see how much you will get. And for some platforms, it's a uh, very, very small amount of money. So sometimes you have to accumulate so many platforms so that you really have some kind of uh, income. That's it. Yes. Um, perhaps you could uh, tell um, the producers who are watching what your function would be for them if they have a, a film and what, what you can offer them and what it costs. If sure. It costs. So if you have a film that's super easy, you go to cinemarket.io. You can see uh, the name of the platform in my, in my name, in my tag name. Uh, it's free to use, it's free to register. So there is no cost upfront. Uh, you can list your films and list your rights. Uh, so that the, the, the people who are coming on the buying side of the platform that are uh, professional buyers, we check every person coming to buy films, uh, they will be able to see where your film is available because they don't want to spend time and uh, check your film if in the end it's not available for their country or for the type of rights that they are after. And, uh, and Cinemarket is uh, helping you uh, make uh, matches, meaning that uh, we take your film, we make selections, we offer them to some buyers. Of course, the buyers can do that themselves and you can also get in touch with them uh, directly through the platform, but we push the titles also with our promotion and on dedicated films, uh, with newsletters, with promotion, dedicated communication for, for specific buyers. Uh, and the way Cinemarket is working, we take a revenue share on the rights that are exchanged on Cinemarket. Uh, we take a 10% commission, but until you make a deal, you don't pay anything. It's completely free. So it's up to you to accept a deal or reject it. But until, until you have it, you have no cost to, to be listed on Cinemarket. Mm -hmm. And I, I see you're based in Berlin and Babelsberg. How come uh, the company is... Uh... Well, the company is, uh, was founded by a French-German uh, person called Adrian, who is living in Berlin. I am myself based in Lyon. You are right now in my living room. Okay. And I'm, just, <laughs> I'm back from a 10 years uh, expatriation in China. So you see the team is very international. We work from everywhere. We have people in London. We have people in New York. And yes, we have people in Babelsberg as well. Yes, that's it. Yes, no, I mean, that. That probably uh, fits in with the uh, the type of company you you are it, that you're not all having to be in an office in in Babelsberg or downtown Berlin. <laughs> exactly, exactly. We've been working remotely for quite some years, so for us, confinement or not is the same. So that's like a a, a virtual market um, for Joanna. Um, when you're going to festivals and markets, uh, do you um, you meet up with platform acquisition executives and and discuss with them there on, on site about uh, films that you are representing? Is that where the connections, the, the re working relationships are developed? I mean, yes, once upon a time. <laughs> but once upon, um, once upon a time, hopefully again. Uh, yes, I mean, as with all the, the buyers, I guess that with platforms, it's the same thing. Uh, we meet on the market, but... Um, now even more than than ever uh we 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 just you know uh are yearly um i mean you're around in contact through emails and having brief uh you know zoom calls as everyone now to 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 keep up with new acquisitions but um i think it's really important what Anne sophie said that it's not always you know to think of uh the nationality and the origin of a film but also to think of other themes that can uh, help target a specific platform as she mentioned uh, the platform from gaga um that that was developed i can also think of a platform like a, a very strong horror themed platform like shudder uh, so again it's 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 uh, you have to to think of all the different aspects uh, you know, your, your, and themes your film might have rather than only the nationality to try to find the, the right fit and the right uh, platform. But again, unless a platform is strong enough to pay uh, the right amount for, for your film to have exclusivity, then the other solutions are, are like Anne Sophie mentioned, numerous uh, and, and usually because they cannot. Uh, pay any money up front and it's usually rev revenue share uh, deals it's it's mostly on non-exclusive basis which means that you can have your, your film available you know on, on 15 platforms at the same time uh, across same territories and it won't be a problem but um yeah 
Yes, I, I see there's one film that you have on your uh, lineup, um, Oasis mm -hmm. from Serbia, which uh, um, so congratulations at the weekend in Cottbus. It won two awards, um, at, which you. Cottbus was delayed because of uh, you know, the lockdown and then yet again. So in, in the end, it had to be completely online. But um, I mean, that, that film, um, uh, have you, it was in Venice, uh, won the Europa Cinema label in, in September. And mm -hmm. um, this is one which you are now, no doubt, I mean, it's a very specific type of film. I'm sure, again, you'll have to be identifying um, platforms which would, would find this one uh, interesting to, to have in their, in their lineup. Yes. Well, I think that, I mean, for, for because again, it's, it's as I said, you first have to know what film you have in your hands and what's the, the film's nature. And I think that Oasis, uh, um, you know, again, for me, the most important thing is to be on the same page with the producers and director of a film. So when we pick up a film to be on the same page of, of what the film can do, uh, especially uh, depending on when it's launched. Uh, so in such a challenging time with a film, which I, I, I think is is, is, a, is a really beautiful uh, piece, piece, an important piece of, of filmmaking. Um, so for me, it was crucial that, that it is represented and out there at the same time, it's a very challenging film, uh, even, even in normal times, that would be the case even more so now. And it is a film that because uh, of, of its nature um, and the fact that it's, it's uh, uh, I mean, I mean the 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 things one could do for its distribution uh, in order to have it distributed even in cinemas, etc., is probably physically based rather than uh, on on VOD platforms, and and it's a film that would probably have, you know. Uh, in order to, I mean, it, you can put it on platforms now, but talking about, you know, a strong distribution out there because it's always what you seek for your films. I think that it's a film that, you know, should be backed up by really, you know, art house lovers, uh, distributors who would do so many physical events, uh, uh, you know, focused on working with specific uh, institutions about, you know, with with uh, uh, health issues, mental health issues, and really targeted stuff that cannot happen now. Uh, but talking about online possibilities, because it's a strong, very strong film by a talented director. It's a film I can easily, you know, see um, uh, sometime from now on a platform like Mubi, which is, you know, at this point for these type of films, a very straightforward thought for us to go towards to. Uh, it's not a film that, that, you know, could easily sell to a Netflix or an Amazon. And at the same time, it's a film, uh, because it's still very fresh in a way, you know, it, it, it premiered at Venice. I think it's a film that can also end up on platforms um, that are started off by, all rights distributors, which is something that we see more and more. Um, we see, uh, you know, now I can think of, of uh, film movement or I can think also of distributors who had all along strong uh, VOD platforms like such as uh, Curzon in the UK. But what I mean is that there is a way for some films that are strong auteur um, uh, films to also find a way on platforms through an alt rights distributor and it's what people are trying to and distributors are trying to put together more and more uh, which is to maybe uh, find solutions in online distribution so this uh, and, and and to to conclude and let other people talk again I think that is for the type of films we sell at the moment, which is, you know, uh, it's getting harder and harder, uh, even pre-COVID, it was hard for them to get distributed. I think that although, you know, things are, we're talking always about the very gloomy aspect of, of things that, that, you know, with COVID and everything going on, I've also seen on the type of films we sell uh, an opening that might not have been there before, um, which is less risk-based on uh, online theatrical options, especially in, in markets such as the US, where it would be much more risky for a distributor to pick up a film and spend a big PNA in a market that's very challenging for challenging films. And now they're, you know, they can 
experiment, experiment, and 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 sometimes it actually pays off. So in a in a way, when we talk about platforms, there is also you know online theatrical and different platforms than just what we call VOD that have come up now with with uh, with COVID, which yeah. is interesting. I I think. Thank you. The fact you mentioned on um, all rights distribution leads me now to for us to move up to Poland to Michal from uh, Aurora Films. I just moved my little window across. <laughs> and uh, I was looking at uh, your um, lineup in the past and I see you have had a fair number of um, uh, East European, Central East European films in the past. There was a um, film from North Macedonia by Tiona Mitevska and um, the Bulgarian film Father, which was, uh, uh, and, um, Bad Poems from Hungary, and also Radu Judah's film. I do not care if we go down in history as barbarians, as examples, but um, looking at, again, is a, a very wide selection of films. But um, perhaps you could tell us about your experiences as a distributor, all rights, and in Poland, as far as working with platforms, have you developed your own VOD platform from Aurora and, uh, what has the situation been like now in these last few, last months um, with the pandemic? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you for inviting me here. Uh, so, well, yeah, in fact, uh, like you mentioned, quite a lot of our Central and East and East Southeast European titles we we have in our lineup. Uh, it's around 15 percent of our lineup, let's say, altogether. But it's quite a lot compared to other Polish distributors. So what's the situation? Not very well, not very good, unfortunately. Uh, I will come back a little bit to the history, let's say, so to spring this year. Uh, so in Poland, uh, comparing to other countries in Europe, the cinemas were closed just like that, just from day to, to another day. So mm -hmm. from Friday to Saturday. So we were just stuck in the middle of nowhere uh, with, uh, with releases planned, with campaign, media campaign prepared and paid. Yep. And that was the moment we really uh, had to find some solution, what to do, what to do like in, uh, in really risky time and totally unpredictable, not only because of the pandemic, but also because of the, uh, let's say, uh, political decisions which were made at that time. Uh, so uh, the first idea was to cancel everything. And, that, and we did. We canceled all the releases because there, were no, there was no other uh, way to, to do anything. But then uh, like two or three weeks passed and we were starting to look for a solution, for the online solution to make the company working to to use some of the campaigns we we planned with so even the pandemic started all the uh, uh, all the paper magazines were published so some of the ads some of the articles some of the interviews were published and we uh so the the movie uh which was the first one who uh which uh which was the let's say the market loser was the chinese uh uh so long my son the berlinale title from 2019 and it was the first the first releases release we decided to put online so not no, without waiting for the for the regular cinema so um and unfortunately it was not a success and it was not a success because we had no tools to, uh, to do it uh, because we are using some uh, VOD platforms which were not, which were not uh, uh, let's say, very popular. It was a small one. It was just built. Uh, it was connected to one of the cinema we were co-running in, uh, in Warsaw. Really small one. It was a cinema of uh, two screens, one 30 seats, the other 20. So uh, even the cinema was small. So th the same was the VOD platform. Uh, but uh, and then also from day to another, that was the only release we made totally online. And then we decided it's not a good idea because we are losing first the release, the, like the opening, 
And then we are losing money. We are losing also the future because what happened next, it was uh, the situation when all the cinemas started to work again in June. And we wanted to release the, to, to re-release the movie in the cinemas, like normally. I'm talking still about So Long My Son. And uh, the, 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 the cinema managers were not very interested in coming back to the movie, which were online already, because it's old. Even it was released right a month ago. So it was already too old. And uh, that was the lesson we learned from this situation. Uh, but in the meantime, right before the reopening of the cinemas, uh, the Society of, uh, of Polish Art House Cinema, I think this is the translation into English, uh, they were working on, the, on a VOD or let's say virtual cinema platform. And uh, it was finally ready I think it was beginning of June. It was finally ready after two months of preparation. And then once it was opened, the government reopened the cinemas just a week later. So, um, so that's, that's what, you know, that, that, that it learned, it, it was, you know, we, we got a lesson that like, we cannot plan anything. We cannot expect anything. Uh, and but but one thing you, you should always remember that uh, what is for sure if the movie went into the internet it won't be a new one anymore mm. so um uh however so the, 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 then we had like three three months of, of uh working back with the cinemas it was rising 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 uh for for a couple of months until mid September or no, mid, no, mid uh, I'm sorry, October, when uh, the situation happened again. First, it was the, the capacity of the cinemas were reduced by half, then reduced by 75%. That it was then it was shut down. I think it was mid October. So we are back in the same situation. Uh, however, the platform I mentioned, this virtual cinema platform, is on. I would not say on a full swing, but. Uh, but it's working much better than in uh, in June. It's it's more popular. It's uh, it's connected to the audience. This is the, another lesson we learned that uh, not uh, like every uh, probably this is something you as a VOD specialist uh, you you know it much better than than we do or we did before uh, that every single VOD platform might have its own audience, different one. So we had some commercial VOD platforms oriented on thrillers, commercial cinema, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, we had some other connected to some youngsters, and the virtual cinema uh, platform I, I, I mentioned I'm talking about is, I think, mostly connected to the art house cinema audience, which suits our needs, and. Uh, mm, but it's still, it's like nothing happened, nothing different happened compared to the normal market. It's still 5 7% of the market, even it's online. But that's the, that's the I mean, that's the better, situ we are right now in a better situation. This is something I told in uh, right before our meeting that compared to, to the situation from 10 years ago, we are right now in much better position, even the, the money coming from from the platform are, are really, you know, un, uh, small, uncomparable to the to the regular cinema market. Mm. Um, now, here in Germany, there have been uh, cases where, because of the lockdown coming back and then going away and coming back, that some uh, distributors have decided that they will um, stream a, a, a film, but they will come into an agreement with uh, cinemas that there is a uh, re like revenue sharing either that um, then the cinema on its website can have a link to the the um, the, the film which is being streamed uh, has that been something which you have um, practiced or any of your colleagues in Poland um, yeah this this is something I for I forgot to tell it's uh, well so this virtual cinema platform since it was set up by the society of the art of cinemas it was from the very beginning an idea of sharing the revenues with uh, uh, 
with uh, the cinemas between the platform, which I, I don't know exact numbers, but it's a couple percent of revenues goes to the platform. And then what, what's left, it's divided between the cinema and the distributor. And of course, uh, of course, it's not of course, nothing is true here, but it's you are selecting the cinema nearby or the one you like, or the one you need to, want to support anywhere in Poland. So you're selecting first the cinema, then selecting, or sorry, first the movie, then selecting the cinema. And this is the way the money are shared between uh, all three parties here. So yeah, that was the very first idea of this platform. And uh, I'm, I, I'm still, still uh, trying to, uh, uh, to, to, show the, to, to show you the difference that it's not a VOD platform. It's not a regular VOD platform because it was connected to the cinemas. Yeah. So from the very beginning, we were also pushing the, um, the society to make it as real, as cinematic as possible. So even our movies had an exact hour of, of the beginning of the screening, like 6 p.m. on Wednesday, plus minus 15, 30 minutes. But if you're late, you're not watching the movie. So, uh, and it was funny. I mean, people liked it uh, because people really, they were like lacking of a normal life. And uh, they wanted to have a, you know, idea of having a screening, going to the cinema, even if it's online, at 8 p.m. on Wednesday or Friday, just to have this, you know, plan of the day. That's it, yes, because otherwise it can be um, any time, uh, at uh, anywhere um, situation, that's yeah, true. Well, it was also, of course, connected, because the, the platform is connected to the... Uh, cinema ticket system mm -hmm. is also connected to the to the rights thing so uh, to the, the you know this 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 rights uh, issues so we were still uh, not pretending we were thinking about this as a normal cinema screening it was connected to the uh, to the ticket selling uh, program and uh, and we were reporting this as a, as a cinema screening not as a VOD because on our, in our opinion, it was not a VOD. Right, yes, yes. Thank you, Micha. Anytime, anywhere, Tudor, let's talk about uh, your particular initiative, which of course, well, you uh, launched this long before any of, any of what has happened this year. We knew that the pandemic will come, actually. You knew it, so, ah, oh, yes. <laughs> so this is, TIFF Unlimited, TIFF Transylvania Film Festival, which normally takes place at the beginning of June, the end of May, beginning of June, just after Cannes, when we're all uh, just looking forward to coming to another festival, and which better one to come to than Transylvania. This year you were a little a bit delayed, but you did have a physical festival as well as online um, on, on that side, but then this particular initiative, as I say, you had uh, launched this a little beforehand and perhaps you can uh, tell us what what um what was the thinking behind this and uh, yeah hello everybody uh we we launched this this vod platform called tiff unlimited uh, actually last year it was uh, at last year's festival so june 2019 mm -hmm. and it was a project which we we had in our mind for for some time because i think it came mostly due to the realities of the Romanian uh, uh, theatrical market, which I think we, we have uh, quite a few number of uh, auteur uh, cinemas, independent cinemas who would show auteur films. And uh, basically we are, all the distributors are fighting to, 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 for multiplex slots, which of course will go to American films and to blockbusters. So uh, I thought it would be great to have a online platform somehow complementary to the festival as to be able to extend the life of the movies which are acquired by by distributors and also by by movies who are shown in our festival and we thought we can somehow uh, adapt our annual budget as to as to accompany also some uh, some fees for for development such kind of a vod operation and uh, Last year, we we kind of uh, did a, 
quite an extensive research on the market and we decided to to work with the uh, Vimeo OTT as a, as a partner who would uh, cover all our technical infrastructure. It was uh, an, quite an outstanding uh, expense, but we thought that it's important to, as you are a player who would now compete with all the big majors like Netflix, HBO Go, you have to have a, you know, a technical kind of a backup, like solid backup as not to crash and, you know, to have all these problems. And uh, last year, it was quite successful after the after we launched it at the festival, we got I think around 1500 subscribers after one month or two months, and then it slowly go down, go down. And we thought, Oh, what we're going to do. And I thought, it's, 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 it, 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 it was just a, a, a bad business idea. But then, uh, you know, uh, the February came and uh, we realized that, hey, we are actually not in a bad position because we have our platform in place. And it was impressive. Uh, I, I, I looked again yesterday to our graphics, you know, showing the number of uh, how many people accessed uh, uh, and joined the platform and how many people view films and in starting I think February 24th it really went up 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 and I think we doubled the number of subscribers and we tried to come up with uh, a really strong uh, promotional and marketing uh, campaign as to be able to to come every weekend with some kind of a package of, uh, of free airings like movies which we'll offer for free uh, because the, the backbone of the platform is a, is an SVOD based platform, so you have to to pay a fee. We it's around 500 euros plus VAT per per month as to become a subscriber. It is accessible just for Romania, but now we are looking for to acquire many more titles who would be available also for uh, like worldwide, uh, you know, potential spectators and. Uh, but at the beginning, so we we were trying to to take advantage of of, uh, of this forced lockdown and to be able also to refresh the the catalog of movies. We were having, I think, we are we do want to keep this number of 150, 170 titles uh, uh, like most of the time, and we we refresh it. We we are uh, having, I think, three four new movies every week. Uh, we are working on a business model like like you said at the beginning i think Kiana mentioned about uh, offering flat fees for each title like non-exclusive model and uh, we are negotiating with sales agent for even you know getting a package deal for more titles from from the, the ones which have are, are having really a, a strong catalog and we are trying to keep the, the curatorial, the same curatorial approach like we have in Transylvania. So we are looking for films which are quite provocative, original, of course, coming from big auteurs, but also discoveries. And, and I remember like two, two moments which were, I think, defining for, for what happened this year in, in spring. First of all, we were, I, I, I was remembering that a lot of our uh, very like cinephile audience, the people who are uh, TIFF fans, they were um, saying like, oh, we would like to see a Russian film, which we heard it won the audience award, I don't know, 10 years ago. It was a, a quite a long movie called Chapito Show by Sergei Loban, I think. Oh, yes, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, it was a crowd pleaser movie and I think not yeah. many people saw. And of course, after two, two screenings of the festival, the, the movie vanished. So we were able to trace the producers or the distributor in Russia. We made a deal and we put it on the platform and it had quite a big amount of... Uh, spectators and uh, also we tried to do some commercial deals with uh, with sponsors and with the uh, potential advertisers who were uh, in a way supporting or uh, they were paying us a fee for let's say offering uh, a specific screening a free screening and uh, I remember like the big splash was uh, in one night we, we did have for one evening uh, Mr. Gaga, the, the a dance movie, quite famous about uh, uh, Ohad Naharin, this amazing Israeli choreographer. And in that particular evening, we had, I think, 4,500 4, uh, spectators in that particular time. Of course, it was a free screening, but I think 
we were trying to, to keep a good conversion of the people who are then coming back at the platform, doing uh, or making a subscription. So I think we were fortunate that we had the platform and the results were quite good. This year we are you know, uh, happy for having a small profit, which is good for a business operation. And right now we are trying to look for, uh, look for like to, to produce some other content, which uh, would be like the second step to, to, to do some, you know, interviews with actors. We are broadcasting uh, some master classes of, of important guests who visited the festival. So we are trying a bit to, to diversify the offer on, on the platform. That's right. I saw you, I think you got Nicolas Cage on there, yeah. haven't you, for example, but you'd have to subscribe to be able to, to see Nicolas Cage. Yeah. But it's worth it. That was very entertaining. And he no, was it was very, a good conversation. It was, yeah. very, it was a good conversation. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I just want to check. It's one month is five euros plus VAT. Yeah. And 12 months, 65 euros. Yeah. Yeah. But that's only at the moment, it's only for, um, uh, for Romania. It's only for Romania. As said, uh, we, we thought about. Uh, uh, having on the platform some titles which would be accessible for uh, for uh, Romanian uh, citizens living abroad. So we are talking about mostly Romanian titles right. who, who would be, yeah, offered they, for. They, yes, they would then be, yes, because that's right. I mean, there are films probably from the Romanian days and, yeah. and such, which you, you have, you could then um, sort of uh, individually make those then available. And ha has this um, initiative, has that uh, inspired other festivals? Or were you inspired by other festivals on doing this? I mean, other festivals here? Uh, for, in us, for us, I, I, I do remember when we researched this specific case, we were inspired by, by two other cases in Europe. I mean, by, by Drakken Films in Göteborg and by uh, uh, Rotterdam Unleashed which were i think the I, I still consider them as as two very strong uh, cases of of vod platforms attached very working very complementary with a festival and we've tried to look how do they work we were exchanging some emails with them we were looking on their uh programming approach and uh yeah that's how we started and right now we were working uh, especially this year with smaller festivals from Romania who were forced to do their online editions and we were kind of a partner ring with them like European Film Festival. We did a collaboration with Cine Polska, like organized by Polish Film Institute. We did uh, the Fashion Film Festival on, on, on the platform. So we tried lots of other yeah, partnerships. That's right, because I mean, I can imagine that the technical side of that's quite a, a challenge, quite a, a, a hurdle, you know, people. Uh, it was a nightmare. I mean, I, I remember uh, working with Vimeo was, was great because they offered kind of sense of safety, but also it was very complicated to, to customize the platform. And it was very, very difficult to uh, offer, you know, a friendly, uh, you know, homepage for the viewers because they were very, they work, you know, they don't make a tailor-made solution for festivals. So it was very difficult to, to find a way and we were emailing them all the time. And of course, I think in March, their platform fell for one night. I think when, I think it was when it was the Easter in US and when everybody was online and, uh, yeah, we were in the position to ask for financial compensation, which was good. Uh, uh, thank you very much. Well, um, we'll, we'll, if there are any Romanians outside of Romania, maybe they'll, they'll have a little taste of home then, thanks to you in, in the future, see how, how things develop. But we're looking forward. I, I saw you were calling for submissions for, for next year and with the, the usual dates, the end of May, beginning of June. Let's hope that is... Uh, well, I'll be looking forward to coming back to Cluj next year. So that's uh, hopefully. Uh, that, uh, hopefully that will work out. Um, I just would like to say to Ilaria, do we have any questions from, from the audience that uh, we can ask the panelists? 
I don't see any question for the moment. I'm uh, mm -hmm. also watching on the uh, online uh, version on Facebook. Uh, for the moment, right. I don't see them, but maybe people are just shy and uh... They're shy. Yes. <laughs> well, I, I, I... And Sophie, yes, you'd like to uh, make a comment. Yes, if I may, I wanted to mm -hmm. because you mentioned some platforms linked to festivals. Mm -hmm. There is one mm -hmm. in France called Tank. Uh, mm -hmm. specialized in documentaries and the early yes. course to the Lusas uh, film festival that's very mm -hmm. good so that mm -hmm. that's that's one for sure and I also wanted to say that definitely for video on demand platforms uh, fresh films are where you can get the better deals for the bigger platforms but of course uh, smaller platforms and niche platforms are also looking for older titles uh, we mm -hmm. have films from 1936 for sales on the market. Uh, it's Mongolian films from the archives. And we know some platforms right now are also showing classic films. So don't be shy. If your film is a little bit older, there might be somebody interested in watching it. And I think Tudor, your example was that film from Russia from, I don't know, eight or 10 years ago is one example that the film is, uh, is never too old, I think, to, to find uh, a new life and, and an audience somewhere. So try it. Even if it's old, we welcome it at Cinemarket and maybe you can find a buyer here. That's, that's good to hear. Yes, um, it would be also interesting to hear from both you and, and Joanna. Um, we're hoping that this is just this year that so many festivals have then had to have the, their program go online. What does that mean for you and for your uh, business prospects uh, selling on to um, video plat VOD platforms? Um, if the, the films have been like for example, here in Cottbus, now the films will be available until the end of uh, December within the whole of Germany. Uh, and uh, does that affect um, your opportunities? Well, at Cinemarket, it's each seller who decides. We don't right, take the yes. rights of the film. Yeah. So it's uh, mm -hmm. really each sales agent, producer who decides when is the right moment for the film to be sold to video on demand platform uh, of course this year it's been it's been quite difficult because people were expecting uh, and not knowing what would happen they were waiting to see if cinemas would reopen if they could uh, still do some uh, some screenings there or if the festivals would still be running and they could still be applying or not now we have films that are a year old and of course they might be too old uh, for 2021 even though they haven't been touring that much compared to other years so for them yes maybe online is the solution for now uh, mm. I really hope that next year is not going to be as, as 2020 uh, for all of us, but also for films and, uh, and that we can see some normality coming back also for the market, because definitely the prospect that we can get from online is, uh, is not what we, what we were having and not what we wish for the films, the filmmakers, the producers and everyone. Joanna, oh. what, do you, what do you think? Um, well, of course, it's 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 challenging in terms. I mean, first of all, uh, for for independent films uh, and auteur films, the festival circuit is a very, I mean, is 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 very important. It's a big part of of not only. Um, can, can you hear me well still? Yes. Okay, sorry, because my connection was not very stable for a moment. Um, it's 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 of course been been a challenge uh, revenue wise because the fees are not the same, and and uh, as you mentioned, Martin, uh, you need to be very careful about um, when it uh, shifts to uh, let's say virtual uh, online festival screenings to uh, limit to you know um, how many views. Uh, uh, how it will be geo-blocked, uh, all that in order to make sure that it might not jeopardize a sale or uh, uh, th this type of thing. Um, of course, many festivals, because they're uh, smaller festivals, have had to completely cancel because, as Tudor mentioned, not everyone has the capacity to, you know, put up a, an online uh, festival. So it's it's been challenging. Um, uh, revenue wise but also it's it's really important to 
to to say that for smaller but also bigger festivals that it is really 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 important to have a festival actually take place and it's not the same when you don't have you know the physical festival when you don't have the red carpets when you don't have the press and we saw that with with venice you know the fact that you know i i i saw my my dad for a coffee and he was like oh that that film just, you know i heard about this film. i read about this film which is great but that wouldn't have happened if venice didn't happen you know physically with all the buzz and the press and you need all that uh, on an international but also on a national level in order to follow up for a sale after that uh, even for you know being smaller films uh, i mean you know let's say more challenging films i don't like the word small but also bigger outer independent films they're all in a you know uh, quite fragile in 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 the moments you know uh, we currently live in and you need that type of festival support. It's still a really, really important platform for the films. So it has been challenging from, from both aspects, uh, you know, buzz and uh, how it can lead to a sale. And of course, revenue wise uh, across the year. That's true. And I think also, I mean, the, as I say, we're hoping that it's only a temporary situation, but for young filmmakers wanting to get, you know, uh, get to know the industry and make themselves known. Of course, that again is uh, without the, the physical contact and the meeting people by chance in the bar afterwards after the premiere of the party and so on. This is again, not happening. yeah, and 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 this is not happening. Of course, again, to, in order to build up a, 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 an author's name, it's it's been more challenging. And even you know, for for press coverage, which is of huge, massive importance for for these films, um, one could think that because things are, are happening online, maybe uh, the press could more easily cover a bigger number of films because they don't have to be on the grounds and the expenses are, are, are lower, but actually doesn't mean that because it's been very hard for all parts of the industry. Uh, many, many, um, uh, you know, you know it better than me, Martin, but so many people from the press are, uh, uh, are on furlough, so less people to write. Uh, so, you know, even when festivals actually take place, and I saw this with Venice and Oasis, you know, I, I had an amazing uh, publicist who made it happen, but it was a really huge challenge to have the films reviewed. Whereas, you know, one would think, okay, finally a big A festival is going on since Berlin because Cannes didn't happen. And so, you know, there will be support. The press will be covering all the films as much as they can. And it, it wasn't the case because it's not, you know, as easy as one would think. Um, so it's, it's, it's challenging indeed, yeah. Yes, thank you. Uh, Ilaria, I think we have a, a question. Did I see one up there, Q and A? Um, yeah, um, so there is someone who was asking uh, if uh, anybody has an experience with web series format, which platform would you recommend? Uh, I see that Anne-Sophie answered, maybe you can uh, say that uh, just uh, quickly uh, also, Anne-Sophie. Uh. Yeah, sure. Cinemarket is open to web series. We take short-term documentaries, feature uh, and series as well. Um, of course, it's more challenging to find uh, distribution because you don't have to just agree with one uh, content, but many, and you have to have quality all along uh, the, the series. So that's that's one thing, uh, but that's possible, especially for the smallest platforms that are after a specific genre or, uh, as I said, educational elements. So depending on what your web series is about and uh, the target audience and uh, the genre, uh, definitely there are possibilities. Uh, it's, it's hard to say without knowing the content, but uh, it's possible. Thank you. So I think we've more or less come to our uh, hours uh, slot, unless uh, Ilaria, you have some more, more questions uh, coming in. Um... No, I don't have really a question. I just uh, would like really much to thank all our panelists because I think that uh, thanks to their generosity, uh, a lot of people could benefit of uh, um, their inputs. And uh, um, yeah, this was uh, very interesting for me. So maybe 
Um, so yes, a lot. thanks a lot. Uh, in uh, also on behalf of all the Frisket Plus participants, which are our first public, but not only because uh, we were quite a good number today. So really, thank you very much, and uh, also thank you, Martin. Yes, thank you to all the panelists for their contributions, and I look forward to seeing you sometime in 2021, hopefully in Berlin. It may be a bit later than normal, but uh, that's probably going to be the first place that we, we will uh, be able to see each other. But uh, it'd be good to, uh, to uh, be able to catch up with everybody as well, not just on, like, on a Zoom gallery, although this has been a, an, a, a very enjoyable hour nevertheless. Thank you. Yeah, again. let's let's hope this will be like only a 2020 mood, and for 2021 we will start again, <laughs> meet you, and, meet in person. That's right. And of course, I uh, shouldn't forget that uh, some of us will also see each other, even if it's like this, uh, in January during Trieste, when we meet meets West and First Cup Plus. So uh, I know that that, that will be also an opportunity to see some some familiar faces as well. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you, Martin. Uh, thank, thank you, you. everybody. Uh, yeah, thank you, Wendy Smith West, for uh, uh, hosting uh, this panel together with uh, Fosca Plus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for having us.